All right, so I've been wanting to do this video. Um, when I bought the P6 the first time, I bought it off of not hype, but sound. When I got it the second time, <laughs> and this is funny because it's the same thing with the uh, the SP404. I've had the SP404 four times at least, and I don't ever keep them. And you might say, why? Part of it is I get bored with the workflow. And with the SP, the sound was good, but I was like, it just wasn't what I really wanted. I think I wanted the 303 or the 202 sound. This little device, I feel gets pretty close with that sample rate option and really sounds good. Now the 202 would be an item I would probably be quick to grab. One of the biggest problems though with it is one, um, it's, I don't know if I get one, if it's like, you're going to buy it used, obviously. I, I don't know if I would use it for anything but just pushing the sound through it. And that's kind of where I'm at with this thing. It's not that I don't like it, but I think I like it more for the, the, um, the sample rate and the compression and the uh, filters on it. That's probably what I like. The workflow is not bad. It's just... I would probably use Ableton or use Koala if I just needed portability. I would use my phone in this together and then just get the samples out. So I kind of did that here. I took, this was a sample. I sampled at a lower rate, sample rate. And I did, um, I got this off the radio. And then I also um, put a filter on it and some compression. And then what I did was I made four copies the fourth one is reversed with a gate on it. These I chopped up into three different chops. So these, if you want a visual, I'm trying to keep this close together so it stays in frame, but this little cable in between here is kind of in the way. I need one of those that kind of turn this way and the angle ones. But anyway, um, so then I took those chops and I literally just went to the samples page, pressed the button, not that way. Hold on. You gotta have the mic on. Press the button and there it is, there's the chop. And then I just chopped it at that corner like that. Now to hear it back, one of the problems I've noticed here is to send the audio back. It should work, but because on the iPad, it, this is not a Koala thing. Let's get this straight. It's not a Koala thing. It is an Apple thing that Koala, see how Koala has the input here, but there's no output. So whatever you connect last to this thing is what it's supposed to use as the uh, sound out. Let's see if it's, oh, you know what? User error, volume. But see, it should be going through the P6 and it's not. So it's only going through the iPad and that's what I'm getting thoroughly confused on or why it's not working. The other option would be grab this thing here. It could, oh, you know why it could be? Could be that it's, uh, let me unplug it and replug it back in. Let's try it. See, it's doing that charge thing and that may be where it's, the problem is, is that it's trying to, I forgot how to fix that. I'll have to look at that later. I don't want to redo this on the video for you, but. Now when I'm in AUM, I have no issues with this. It'll play it back through here, but for some reason, um, it's not doing it here. Let me just do this, so I'm gonna save. I'm gonna close it out and then reopen it. There we go. So now it's where it just, it's an Apple thing. It's really not Koala, it's just an Apple thing. So I'm gonna get rid of that because I already have it over here. I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this down to
So I'm gonna do that. Now you can see where I would have chopped the samples if I had a visual. Unfortunately, there is no visual. This is kind of like using the uh, KO-133 stuff where you don't have a visual uh, or a pocket operator. You kind of don't have a visual really of the sample. So is Koala easier? Of course, we're not gonna get into what's easier because that you wouldn't buy this for easier. I would say you buy this because you want the step sequence. I would say you buy this, maybe you like the granular. I would say you buy this because you like the way the effects are. For me, SP stuff is all about the effects that it, and the character it brings. That's the reason why I like this device. And everything in this device, or I would say the majority of stuff in this device sounds really good to me. And when I get to the SP 404 Mark II, it's a cool device, it sounds great. You can you know, resample and do all that. You can resample in here. Um, but I always find that that one of the things I didn't like about it was half the stuff this one has. So it's kind of weird. Now, if they ever bring the micro timing into um, the SP404 Mark II, if they bring in the sample rate a thing option into there, if they bring in, um, yeah, that's the biggest thing. And maybe the granular back into it, I probably would have an SP404 again just because those features, it's the sound that makes me want the item more than the device itself. So anyway, back to what we were talking about. This should be here. I don't want to just take this piece here. So now you got what you put in here and that great crunchy SP202, I'm gonna call it sound that comes in here. Can you do this with apps? You know what I find with apps, unless you get the right ones, you gotta really hunt for them. A lot of times they sound okay. They sound like Dr. Vibe is pretty good. Uh, the good hurts for sure. It, uh, but those, again, that's compression, the good hurts. And then the, which is more like the 303. And then the, um, what was the other one that sounds good? Oh yeah, the Dr. Vibe one does have the 202 and 303, and they sound good, but sometimes what I find is they, they sound like an effect over the track. Um, how do I describe that? Uh, it doesn't sound as natural. Like this one, the way when you... That just sounds naturally uh, crunchy with the right amount of um, aliasing and whatever else you want to call it. So to me is looking for that in the, the character in that particular piece of gear. And for the cost of this and the fact, I don't want to record myself, the cost of this and the fact that you got all those effects in and can add more and resample. And it does have a, a crazy amount of shift functions, which you got to get over. But um, other than that, that sound, man. And you can't really judge it through a, a a recording through an iPhone compressed into a YouTube video. You have to experience it. But I have heard some videos that sound better than mine, of course. And when I hear them, I'm like, man, that just it just does something to the ears. So I hear something there I want to have. 
So I'm just moving samples over. So what I'm going to do is All right, so now we can play that into here. And we're going to stop it already cuz I don't know if it's two bars, but we'll just go with two bars for right now. definitely not two bars oops and it's not that well it's not that tempo at least so let's see I'm gonna do this I feel like it's really slower than 76 there is no time stretching on here so you got to kind of work with what you got so what I'm gonna do is the good thing is you do have a little semi I'm gonna call it semi time stretching capability on here so you could hit stretch. So it's actually playing faster than 76. I can tell just because of the way it slowed down. So we're gonna increase it to 82 and try that out. I'm listening to the sound to see where does it sound it's natural. Cause here's what it sound like. Right, so how fast is that? You could tap it out if you want. Or you can just keep increasing it till you find a point where you feel comfortable. That should be two beats here. Yeah. Okay, perfect. We're gonna play this one twice. That's the plan. So I feel like what I'm playing here is actually like three bars for some reason, but I'm gonna do four bars and we'll try that. Okay, that didn't work out too well. Try it again. So there's a lot to be desired here, obviously. The sample is not the greatest cut of a sample, maybe not the, even the greatest anything, but but I'm just trying to see what I can do with regards to this. Let's see here, we can stretch that out. Maybe stretch that out. Just adjust the notes here and then see what we come up with. So let's do something a little different. We can actually leave it. I'm just gonna draw it out, why not? So we'll go, just to get rid of these. 
We'll move this over here. We'll draw in this again here. And I can adjust the velocity of the hit while I'm in here. Might as well, right? And then this one, oops, will go here all the way. Try something different. I actually wanted to hit four times. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna erase this portion here. I mean, of course this happens when you play, right? You're gonna try to find what works for you on that spot. Maybe you don't use certain parts, you do use other parts. Uh, we'll lower that one just a little bit. I really don't mind this playing four times because I actually like the way it sounds. So try this. And then if you want to speed it up, That's a little bit better, 96, so 20 dB more. Then I'm gonna take this one, hold on. All right, got an idea already. So this is going to be, this part is going to be the main part. We're going to take this one and stretch it, time stretch it. It's four bars. So we'll let this first part be the intro. So we'll drop four bars in here. That's going to be the intro. So the intro goes here. We'll trigger that one. That's going to be the main part. And then I'm going to do one more thing I'll show you in a minute. So now we got an intro, we have the main part of that. Now let's make let's make a B portion or a second. Some people call it A and B. We'll call it a B section. We're gonna do something different. We're gonna take the same sample over here, turn the reverse off. I don't know, a reverse it rather. Or not. Let's just play it. Let me reverse this one here. So shift, reverse. This is the sample. Or... Okay, so now it's looping. We don't want to loop. Let's do this again. Okay, cool. So now this is the original piece that I sampled. Let's chop the end off here. We'll stretch it. All right, I'm gonna do something different here. So stretching that, I'm just gonna take this part here and I'm gonna stretch the daylights out of this thing. So we're gonna go stretch. It only says two bars, but I'm gonna make it eight bars. It's almost granular, like. Retro. Sixteen bars, four bars. It 
A bars. All right, I like it. It's like a drone almost, kind of interesting. Let's see. That'll work. All right, so I'm gonna chop this sample down here. Crop that. Now this is gonna play over the background. I'm gonna take the attack off a little bit. Perfect, that'll work. So it's eight bars. We're not gonna put a loop on it, but we're gonna put it in here. So this is gonna be a different part that we're gonna go double. And then when we go in, we're gonna add in this little drone for the eight bar. Whoop, that didn't work out too well. Underneath this. All right, cool. So what I'm saying is this is just one way to work with it. Um, of course, you could sequence some things in here, use the granular, whatever you want to do, and then just record those parts in here and then use this to sequence the final, the final piece where you put all your parts together. That's one way to work with it. This is more, for me, this device here is for character mostly, but if I'm on the go and I want to take something that's super portable, I'm not bringing this big old keyboard Maybe I wouldn't even bring the laptop. It's just depending on the situation. But I always have my iPhone, and I I might even bring the iPad, but I'll have my iPhone, and I could take this little pocket guy and still sample and do some different tricks with it. Now, you can do some of this without this. You don't need it. I like the sound of it. That's the reason why I'm using it, obviously. Even with the drums. sample your drums in here and just stop this and then get your drums let's start over here okay I got six samples so we'll start let's start here Um, do like to leave a little space in front of these samples just in case so it doesn't there you go now we can just crop them down you can do these one at a time if you want or you can do them that a little more you can stack them that's my favorite way to do this stuff here I'm gonna crop that is if I want more volume on it I'll just stack them right mix Want a little more volume mix till you get to the right level that's fine with me I want this to be a little louder so I'm gonna go mix perfect I don't want any louder than that 
This one's pretty good, but I'm gonna do it one time. Mix. That'll work. This one could probably use one more. So I'm just gonna mix. All I'm doing is moving. This probably could use one more. That'll work. Same thing here, I'm gonna do it one time. Get rid of that one. That'll work. I like this one where it's at, I'm not gonna touch it, but I will hold down edit, touch all of these and one shot them, right? So now you have. I put gate on here because they don't have choke groups. As far as, well, you know what? Maybe they do have choke groups, but I haven't found it. So I just been, I wanna see, I maybe need to deep dive on that and see if they have choke groups on here. But you could easily put your pattern, oh, not that one. Oh, I didn't even realize it's controlling Koala. Check this out. So it can it can start and stop your loop. Now, I don't know if the record works. Hold on, let's do this. Turn that off. It does. That's crazy. So you can use your record and stop to control Koala. That's pretty sweet already. I'm sure it'll get better as time goes. I know Roland obviously knows how to, and probably has some connection with Merrick to be able to figure out how to map these. You can map it by just going in and using these, you know, to MIDI map, because this thing does do the MIDI out. Um, so one of the features I, I wanted to, I wish, I wish when, and by the way, I could change this to 96 to match. Remember, any changes you make, I said this in a previous video, shift right all and go ahead and lock it in because otherwise you'll lose it, whatever you do it. For me, this thing is going to be a sample processor. I will sample into it and then take that sample and feed it back into something like Koala where it's easier to just go ahead and lay the track down. It's just for the sound. I really, I mean, you go out and you buy an audio interface, you're like, man, I bought this, and you're just using it to listen to sound, right? Most of the time, unless you're recording a live instrument or some other hardware into it, you're generally just listening to whatever the sound of that. That's kind of what I'm doing here, just using it for that, to get that sound that it gives. It does work at 44.1, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 44.1. So... You know you're not getting 48 kilohertz, which is a lot better quality, but that's why you're using this machine is for the not so better quality, right? I mean, you're trying to get that lo-fi feel. And... So now you can start programming in drums. You could pro play them in if you want. I'm not gonna do that right now. You could use this little device, but remember this doesn't have, the, neither one of these have the velocity sensitivity built like the pads aren't. You can do it by manually putting in the, putting um, the velocities here or playing with another device into it. But anywho, copy and then just paste, paste, paste. And because for the sake of time, we're going to do a bigger and then paste. Boom. Now you got all those in. We'll go ahead and put kicks in. I'm just going to put kicks on the ones for right now. Done. SP is quicker with this type of workflow. You can always do the ghost kicks afterwards. Um, why am I doing that? Get out of here. You could do your hi-hats. Go over to note repeat, turn on velocity. So let's do a simple hi-hat.
Start putting in the ghost kicks now. Change the velocities on some of these. Like that. Let's throw in that one. put it right after the first snare and then I'm gonna remove that one and then adjust the velocity of it a little bit then we'll do another one over here this is just real basic beat making stuff I ain't really put a lot of energy in this now since I don't know if there's choke groups in here we're gonna go put choke groups in here so one second so we're gonna hold down edit. I'm gonna touch these three because I want them all in the same choke group. Put them on choke group one, done. So, see so it'll cut it off. So now when you hear it, see it, there you go. shakers now uh, ooh, I'm feeling it already okay cool we're getting there we're getting there so all right so let's save this all right now the problem is because koala can't host I'm not gonna complain about it it is what it is I have to go to AUM when I want to use other instruments really to make it work right but not nah, I'm not gonna complain again I'm not gonna complain I'm just gonna do this and I'm, instead of using, I'm going to use it as a uh, inner app audio because I don't want to have to open it up again. It's already there. And I'm going to slide it over. I'm going to throw a mix through it. So I'm just, I'm just sending a mix bus here. So whatever I, instrument I put on this one, I can send over to this one. Pretty simple. So now I'm going to grab what I want is my percussive stuff, which is shaker. I would, you know, I probably should use, let me use, um, Borista. And let's see if we can find. We want some percussive drums. I use the oh, tambourines a little might be a little much. Let's see. Well, I don't know. I was hoping for. Let's see. What can we use? I would love some presets in here with some more, I don't know, post pizza box. Come on, guys. No, I'm just kidding. It's fine. I'm going to use the built-in keyboard down here. Okay, and you got to turn this on. You got to change. go back and set this. It was at 96. If you don't, because now AUM is hosting, right? So... a little reverb on these. I'm going to use EOS 2. And then we're going to put, um, I'm going to use, I like to use ambience and just turn it down a little bit. Maybe like there.
All right, cool. So. I'll do that there. And we'll adjust the front to be like about right there. Let's just check and see if it loops. Maybe put this out here. Make sure I set the right loop points, right? There we go. That sounds it. All right. So now I'm just going to, instead of even moving it, I'm just going to go ahead and crop. Now I got loop points. I feel like it's good. We'll stretch it to the four bars it is. That's fine. And we'll throw that in to this sequencer here. Pretty simple. So there's four bars right there. Boom. All right, now we got it in there. I'm gonna go back into it and I'm gonna turn that sample down a little bit because it is quite a bit loud. I don't want it overtaking the track, but I do want it to sit in the track a little bit better. So I'm just gonna drop it down. And then here's the track now. It didn't click, did it? So one second. Oof, sounds bad. So we're just gonna take the stretch off. Okay, so I think part of the reason why the stretch is not working is it's stretching at four bars instead of two. So I'm gonna, ooh, that definitely ain't it. I'm gonna change it to beats. Let's see if that works for the stretch. Seems to not be working. All right, cool. I know what I'm gonna do. Sometimes the stretch just messes it up. I mean, it is what it is. It's trial and error, right? Let's get rid of that. We're gonna, oops. I think it might just be two bars. Let's just do two bars. And I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat and repeat again. Now let's try it. There we go. Still, I feel like it's a little loud. So it's not even playing all the way through the sample, which is fine. Okay. And I think my volume on my speaker just went out, maybe. Yes, it did. Okay, so one second while I stop this. So the volume on the speaker went out. I am going to plug it into the computer to make sure it's charging, because I haven't charged in a minute. That's probably why I was doing that. And it should work while it's charging, so let's go back and... Let's 
Kinda got a little bossa nova almost feel. Okay. So, started from making that crunchy sample in here, sampling at a lower sample rate, and then adding some compression and some uh, filter on it. To cut these samples, to bring in those samples in here, didn't take but a second to play them in. Play them in, adjust the uh, ins and outs, or whatever you want to do. And then you could have just done one sample too. You didn't even have to chop in here. You could just do one sample, bring it in with the sound, make multiple copies, make your chops, and you're done. I mean, it's a fast workflow. The only thing this affords you too is think about it this way. This thing can act as an audio interface for you, portable. It can be a drum machine. It can be a sampler. And I'm saying it could be, it's in theory, it's supposed to be a sampler. That's what it's, it's a small portable sampler with effects. You can use the effects to color your sounds. You can use the granular if you like the granular. If you have an iPhone, this little app doesn't work in iOS. They haven't put it on the phones yet. Unfortunately, I wish they would. Um, Cause it's some of my favorite stuff, uh, the Clev Grand stuff. But AUM does work. Koala does work. So it's a pretty much an even match. Just run it through. If you don't want to deal with the whole Koala by itself <clears throat> and you want to be able to use other instruments, just set yourself up one channel. You don't even need two channels. This mixer here is only because I just chose it. You can do one channel in AUM on your phone. Set all your stuff on the same channel because you can add more to it, right? Or even in front of it. So let's say you add this one right here and then you want to you can put it before this once you have a device loaded in there you can add it before it and then take that and this is just a mixer on your phone okay running your sampler and your this is a sampler obviously and then your other stuff through it and now you have this device as an interface as a little drum machine where you can you could drum in the sounds well go back to the drums the only thing you lose with this is you don't have note repeat, technically, that I, I don't think, I'm pretty sure it's not on here. You don't have note repeat, but Koala does on your phone. It's super simple if you want to do those, you know, kind of fast hi-hats. But you can still layer some sequence, some simple hi-hats in. Right? You still got pitch. And as I said before, shift, right, all done. Because you need to save your settings where they're at so you know where they're at, all right? That's it for this video. Just wanted to show you a simple way I would be using it. I'll probably use it with Koala on my phone more or less. Sometimes I'll use the iPad, it just depends on how I feel. If I need more instrument options, then I'll probably go iPad, but if not, and if you have the iPad mini, that's a perfect little, smaller device that's almost probably about the size of this thing itself and those two together man you can make some crazy stuff if you don't have an ipad and don't really even use iphone but you have a computer and you want to take it put hook it up to your computer it can act as an audio interface you can send sounds right into a sample and send it right back i mean i don't know for the price of 200 dollars, yeah maybe you can find one on sale or catch it during black friday catch a sale somewhere get it a little bit cheaper I think it's worth it. I really like it. I don't even have an SP or MPC anymore. I love both of those though. Equally love them. Uh, and and yet this right here kind of has the character that I wanted from both of those devices. The MPC is an amazing sampler, sequencer. I mean, my goodness, that's one of the best. I think it's king when it comes to that. It's like the best at that. Um, You can't, it's hard to top it, right? The... SP gives you the 303 and the 404 stuff for the vinyl cracker. They have vinyl crack on here too. There's like 22 effects total on here. Um, but it doesn't give you a sample rate. I'm not even talking about the grain. I'm just talking about the sample rate. Being able to adjust it. If they ever add that, I think I'd go back to the SP. But this is portability too. Battery operated. I mean, you can unplug it. It's going to work. And then they have the headphones and the play start, stop, and the record now work with i. With Koala, I didn't even know that till I was doing the video here, that it works with Koala. So that's pretty good. So if I need to, well, it's not going to work with AUM, 
So if I come out of AUM, let's say, back into Koala, then it should work. The only thing Koala is missing for me, and it would just, I would be back on Koala iPad a lot more than I am, is just to be able to host AUV3s. And I'm not talking about you got to host a lot. If it had a single channel that could run AUV3s, I'd put in what I need, play it, record it in, then move it out, then do another one. Not, It doesn't need to host a bunch of them, just one. Be able to host one and add one line of a, a, few, a few effects to it. Kind of like what the mixer is like. Not this. How the mixer has like four bus like that. If it was like, oh, that's the AUV3, like one over here, it's an AUV3 that you could put in and then have a couple of the uh, effects can be loaded, like your own effects, AV3 effects. Just one channel for it. That's all you need. And you can just switch it out, record your instrument in, then turn it off and do it again for the next one, repeat it cycle. You don't need to save all the instruments. But I would love that. That would be phenomenal. I know it's not going to happen. I'm not even going to get my hopes up, but it would just be a phenomenal thing to have. Anyway. Uh, I never use that anymore because I'm not really performing in here. I'm just recording stuff. But Koala is still my favorite no matter what. And um, the other thing is the export options. If you're on Ableton, it's really good. You can Ableton drum rack, Ableton live set. You can send out a live set and have all your samples into a live set. Super easy to use. Um, you can even take the current MIDI sequence that you have if you just want the MIDI sequence and add it. Now, I don't have any MIDI sequence that I really would use from here. I just use these MIDI sequences to control the triggers, but I'm just saying if you wanted to, you could, right? And of course you can export your stems and do all that. And you can label all of these. I don't, I didn't label any of them, but it is what it is. You can go into here, click edit, label, tell it what it is. So you could call this one, for instance, your perk, right? So there's your perk. You can name your kicks. Snares, rims, whatever. I probably will do it for this one because I kind of like where it's going. But I just wanted to show you a sample of what you can do with the P6 and the SP404. Now, you might be able to do this with the KO133. Could be an option to do this very, this very thing. And I would probably say that's the better way to go because I don't care for the KO. The KO sequencer is okay. The compressor in there is nice. But overall, I don't really like it. It very much is like, I don't know. The PO33s were, the sound from the PO33s were amazing. The workflow, I didn't care for the PO33, but I enjoyed the sound. And so, yeah, it is what it is. So everything has its quirks, right? Yeah, we're always looking for something to add or something we'd rather better. But this is just where we're at right now. You just deal with it and maybe down in the future it gets better. Things change. Kick. That's the rim. So, yeah. So, um, this is one workflow. I'll try to talk to you about some other workflows once I get there and find some more workflows for it. Some people may just want to pass their sample through it and record a sample in it and send it out somewhere. And it's, that that's probably the easier way to do it if you just want to if you enjoy the sound of this device. But if you buy it just for the sound, I think you'll be you'll be happy, but you'll be looking for something else. Um, this is a crash, maybe. We'll call it crash for right now. Um, you'll be probably looking for something, something else. A label, we'll call this one a drone. <clears throat> so, there you go. That's what it is. I'll press save. Make sure you save on everything, even this. If you want to keep your settings in AUM, make sure you save in AUM. AUM is easy to mix in. Oh my gosh, it's so good on iOS to, to mix really quickly because all your stuff is right there. So it's a great thing and a great combination to work with uh, Koala if you ask me for a mixer purpose. And it works on the phone too. I mean, it's just a, it's a win. All right. That's it for this video. Sorry if this was out of frame. I tried to keep it as in frame as I could, but I just wanted to give you guys the PO6 vibe with this. I'm gonna be using it 
that's just me. When I work with Koala, I'll use it probably even more um, in Koala than even with Ableton because I have so many other plugins I could use in Ableton. But occasionally, if I want to sample something and get that gritty sound, I'm going with this. All right, I'm out.